everyone, welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, my name's Molly, and today I'm going to be reacting to and reviewing Season 2, Episode 6 of The Expanse. Alright, so for those of you that watched my Episode 5 video, you will know that I was very emotional at the end. Um, hopefully you can forgive me for that and it didn't cause you too much difficulty in watching the episode. Though I'm sure that uh, it probably brought back some emotions for people that had seen it in the past themselves. Um, you can probably understand it was extremely emotional, the conclusion of that storyline. So I did mention at the end of that episode that my plan was to talk more about that at the beginning of this video. So I'm going to talk very briefly about a couple things, but I'm actually not going to get into a lot of depth and detail about Miller and Julie and the way that that entire story arc, which I've been told was the story of the first book, um, ended there, the way that that concluded. And the reason that I'm not going to do that is because I'm going to make a separate video focusing exclusively on my thoughts regarding that. Um, I'm currently working on it right now, I'm putting it together, trying to write everything down. I honestly felt that I was pretty uh, majorly impacted. Um, I have a lot of thoughts about it, and I, I really thought that it, it would take up just too much time at the beginning of a video for me to really go through all of that right now. So instead, there will be a separate, specific video of just me talking about all of my thoughts about The Expanse and how it led up into that episode. Because from everything that I've been told from people, starting here is kind of like, um, the beginning of, of a new narrative. So it's continuing some of the older narratives, especially for, you know, characters like Holden, the crew of the Rossi. It's continuing a lot of things that were begun, but it was really also the conclusion of everything involving Miller and Julie, um, who in a lot of ways were really the heart of, at least in my opinion, the series at that point. So that video will be coming out very soon. You can all expect that. And I, I hope that you'll understand why I wanted to do that then instead of putting it on the beginning of this video because, you know, there is a new episode here that I do want to get into and give my full attention and focus to as well. Alright, so that is coming very soon, I promise. I'm currently working on it. Um, but just a couple of things I did want to touch upon. I'm curious to see how Holden in particular is going to be impacted by some of the things that that he saw, that he witnessed, and that he went through in both 2-4 and 2-5, particularly in that he had to make the decision to blow up that ship full of people who, as far as he knew, were there on an altruistic mission and who had ideas that actually were fairly in line with his own in terms of, you know, people being allowed to or, or having the right to have information um, and not wanting this sort of thing to be covered up. but. You know, he made what Miller said, what everyone said to him, and what I completely feel was the right decision in blowing up that ship. But I'm curious to see, you know, is this going to send him into some sort of spiral of guilt and depression? Um, or is it going to maybe make some sort of shift in his way of looking at things? Maybe kind of bringing him more towards a, a more nuanced point of view? I don't know. But I am definitely very curious to see how that plays out. Um, and of course, and, and everything that happened with Miller, too, because Holden had been very hostile towards Miller in the aftermath of Miller killing Dresden, and that really only seemed to let up when it got to the point where he's realizing that Miller is about to die, um, and then, of course, realizing the sacrifice that Miller has made and, and what he has done for everyone. Um, so I'll be curious to see how that impacts not just Holden, but the entire crew of the Rossi, and then, obviously, I'm very excited to see the political fallout and consequences. I'm really curious to see where the show actually even goes from here, now that Eros um, has gone off to Venus to do whatever it, it's doing. Um, I'm assuming there's going to be some sort of new threat that comes out of there. Obviously, there's going to be a lot of political fallout everywhere, um, Earth and Mars, but also just with the OPA, you know, Fred Johnson now has access to all these weapons that, you know, Earth had to trust him, make the decision to trust him based on really Holden's word, um, who they chose to trust based on Avicerala's word, to hand over the control over these weapons to Fred Johnson. Now they are in his hands, you know, so what is he going to do and how is the fact that he has control of these and whether or not people know it or not, how is that going to impact 
the continued dynamics and relationships between, say, the belt, or more specifically the OPA, and Earth, and then of course Mars too. And I'm assuming that we're going to get some more stuff with Mars going into this second half of the season, since we did have a lot of preview and build up um, with, with um, Gunny and her team. We've been seeing them quite a bit, um, but they haven't really been actively involved in a lot of this yet, so I'm assuming that that's going to be more central to the second half of the season, but I'm curious to see how it is. All right, so all that being said, I just want to say a quick thank you um, to everyone who's come out to support me on Patreon. If you're interested in doing so, I'll leave a link in the comment or in the description section below. You do get early access to videos um, and if you sign up at certain tiers. And then for one tier, there's also the option to get full length reactions to some shows, including The Expanse. So if that's something that you would enjoy watching or be interested in, do check out my Patreon, um, or even if you can only contribute like a couple dollars a month just to say, hey, I'm helping out the channel. If you like my content, I would appreciate it a lot. It does actually help more than maybe you realized even that couple dollars a month. All right, so all that out of the way, let's get going. Let's jump into episode six. Here we go, everybody. <laughs> I'm excited. Tops, and I was taking it out for a test run. Commence pre-flight check. Commence pre-flight check. <laughs> the voice interface has been problematic from the start. The original one was Chinese, so. This seems like me every time I try to use uh, speech to text. <laughs> The rest, I guess, is history. Okay. Let's see what you can do. For over a decade, it's the single most plausible explanation. Aaron Wright, you know it is the truth. It's possible that, that it was something else, like a massive relativistic field generator, or or some other bunch of science words you string together. The one thing we do she understand looks fabulous right now. is that Eros was a wake-up call. Whatever it was, it's clearly the greatest technological leap since the Epstein drive. And if it is a weapon, given the depleted state of our missiles. It's a weapon that will conclusively tilt the balance of power in favor of Mars. Dr. Tuerbe, you're late. I can't miss very much. The Rosinante was closest to Eros than anyone. They might have more insight in... The Rosinante and James Holden have gone silent, along with Fred hmm. Johnson and the Martian government, so we just have to be insightful on our own. So everyone's just kind of... Backside mission? We call Pulling it back survey vessel refitting it with our best sensors and probes. We're also that doesn't really the seem like the... closer to the surface. If there's anything left of Eros down there, we'll find ideal it. Ideal thing to do we'll if you want to avoid more week. conflict. I'll expect regular updates from you personally. And that I'm honestly, what he just said that they're going to be just to check that out seems like a really terrible idea. So far, oh. sir, we've confirmed aboard on 121 missiles. Tracking has been very difficult, but we're confident we'll be able to account for all the rest in short order. I feel like I should have known that that would be their first stupid, shitty move. So I don't know what you've heard, Rupert, or if you're even gonna get this. But you know I don't be monitoring your mess. And we wanted to destroy it too, you know? Miller told me you trusted us to do the right thing. And we did. Mm -hmm. I wonder if he knew. This is interesting. So Mil um, Holden's saying we should do this thing because that's what. Yes. I don't think Miller wanted Completely to say agree. It. Miller wanted to say it. Miller wanted to say it. But yeah, I think it's but interesting. That... to keep following Eros. I was ordering you and Amos and Alex to your deaths. Love you. 
questioned it. It was the right thing to do. We all felt the same. I don't want to be the one who says who lives and who dies. Whether you like it or not, you are the captain of this ship. I mean, I understand, so Holden, in the but you got to know by now, like, they would tell you if they disagreed with your point of view. They, they to let you know Naomi in particular. That Naomi and I are together. Sleeping together. Well, this is an interesting conversation. <laughs> when did it start? Just after we got out of Eros. I knew it. They would bet on when they started sleeping together. What the hell was that? That's because I like you, bro. Oh my god, Amos is like so happy that he knew. Hey. I'm glad that me and Amos being together isn't an issue for you. Oh no. She's a good person and I like her, but she's like a sister to me. Right. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'd do her if she let me. <laughs> I'm glad we had this time. <laughs> Okay, this may be one of the funniest moments. It's supposed to be a punch. I suppose not. So what if this bioweapon isn't a bioweapon after all? What if it is responsible in some way we can't yet fully understand? For Eros Mowgli. I believe Eros was infected by an entirely new order of technology. Something from somewhere else, mm -hmm. somewhere beyond the reach of our species. He's making I the right call. The Eros incident was Alpha's contact with alien life. Yeah. The infuriating I thing about this, though. Nine hundred pages of analysis and contingency plans for war with Mars, including fourteen different scenarios about what to do if they develop an unexpected new technology. My file for what to do if an advanced alien species comes calling. It's three pages long. And it begins with step one, find God. I need to get to Venus. You can pull the strings and get me on that ship. I will be your eyes and your ears. I'll be your own private back channel to everything we find unfiltered by Janice and Aaron Wright. Oh, I guess that's good for her, but... Please, let me prove I'm right. No one should be going there. And, and okay, so as I was saying, the infuriating part of this is that... Everyone out there, people know the bits and pieces if they were just talking to each other instead of everyone going silent. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Oh man. On the future, Diogo. Oh yeah, that's what he said. Don't get laid, kid. Instead, he's doing that. Basically, I'm in some deep shit. Well, what a shock. Well, we have one more thing for you to worry about. We need to tell them everything we know about it. We need to tell everyone. And exactly what should we tell them? That is alien technology that we barely comprehend. That would cause system-wide panic. Until we get more information. But maybe it would perhaps. also lead to the various factions everything. not like Mars wasting time fighting with each other. Happens, Deltas always lose. Our first priority is to protect ourselves. And that means we're gonna take advantage of every edge we've got. Do this for you. <laughs> so you do this. When you were out there in the black, the car 20 G3, the whole boat is my way. You about to shake herself apart. Well, I found I can't. I found a car yesterday. Oh my god. That was great. Hey, come here. Bam. 
this guy keeps circling me. He wants to get some attention, I think. Since the first time I approached you after the Donninger, I had thought exactly what I said I was going to do. But now I'm getting the feeling that you're not being straight with me. Well, I understand paranoia is a natural state of mind for a soldier. No, you're, you're not being straight with him, and you're a terrible time. liar, so... Well, you wait, which means that it's none of your goddamn business. We want the same thing, you know. Mm. We're on the same team. And that's the thing with all of you. Earth, Mars, the Belt, the OPA. It's all bullshit. There shouldn't be any teams. Oh, hold on, you're still stuck in that place. It's a beautiful dream, son. And I hope all around to see it come true. But in this world that we live in, in order to survive, you have to pick a side. Is that something that's ever going to happen to Holden? It just seems like he's so adamantly against it. And like, this not being on a side was something that from... Early on, I felt like he and Miller like really had in common, but then the obviously from Miller's that change. <laughs> Holden seems to have doubled down on it. Aside from the fact that I'd be dead.